GMG Vikings versus Packers, the pregame show. We cannot start out 0-1-1. Come on, guys, you waiting. You know what tomorrow will be? You know what tomorrow is? Wait till tomorrow. You know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is 221 uh, fucking days since the Super Bowl. By the time the Vikings play, that'll be 224 fucking uh, days. 224 days to wait for a loss. That doesn't go over well in my house. No. <laughs> we didn't wait 224 fucking days to lose to the shitty fucking team from Wisconsin. Not having it. And you can leave that on tape. You can leave it. Vikings, 38 to 28. Well, 38. Did I just say 38? Wait a minute. Gallahorn, we gather once again. Welcome to the pregame show where we're looking at week one against that team from Wisconsin as they come into U.S. <coughs> Bank Stadium to take on your beloved Minnesota Vikings. <coughs> With me tonight is Drew and Rhino to talk. Okay, guys. Week one football. Now, the biggest news of the day, uh, of the week so far, that we've heard is that our star, absolute stud, Pro Bowl defensive end, Daniil Hunter, was placed on IR for at least three weeks. And luckily... Because it's the COVID season, the rules were jiggered, and it has to be a minimum of three weeks instead of the usual six. And there's, uh, he was designated to return, and all the limits on the designated to return players have been lifted. It used to be one, and then last year it went to two, and this year is anybody can return. So that's good news on that front. But as reported by... Courtney Cronin of ESPN, it is a suspected neck issue that he suffered on mm. August 14th, and I think that was around the first day of practice or somewhere in there. And uh, that's the, quote, tweak, as Mike Zimmer tells it's more than a damn It's tw- more than a damn tweak if he's going on IR. But <laughs> Ryan, how are you doing tonight? Doing all right. I'm... The GMG uh, on on location reporter tonight. I'm out in Montana, and the consensus out here is that team from Wisconsin still sucks. So <laughs> it's it's going across the nation. There we go. There we go. There we go. Like look, look, he's going across country, and he still puts the banner up in the background. What a gamer, dude! Absolutely. Above all, I am a professional. How is? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You wouldn't be on this freaking show if you were. Um... Hey, it's it sounded good. Good to good to see you, Rhino. Glad you're with us. And uh, it's concerning to me that I heard Zimmer say he was going to be ready to go a couple days ago. Maybe I was just hearing things, but a uh, couple things is it definitely leaves leaves me in worry mode for week one. Being a team from Wisconsin and Aaron Rodgers is always a problem. But more, the, my biggest concern is for one, it's a neck. Those things are always scary. Uh, when it comes to lingering and lasting a long time. And quite frankly, a lot of neck injuries ends up guys don't play anymore. Um, so I don't know. I guess the seriousness of it and how long he's going to be out is more of a concern for the for this Sunday, of course. But uh, <clears throat> It makes uh, a lot more sense now why we jumped on uh, Ngakwe, though. Yeah, with, with week one, you know, of course, we're going to have to shift something around there. But I was more worried about i mean it's three weeks i mean if we have to get by for three weeks and we get him back then i mean you don't want to lose him for any games but if we only miss him for three those you know what the neck injury if it wasn't the neck thing i would be a lot less concerned over that injury because those could be bad but we're just it is what it is we have to move on guys 
see what happens. Next man up. Next man up. Well, what it looks like is Unique and Gakwe will start at the right defensive end. And Afedi will move over into Daniil Hunter's spot. And that means both of them will getting will be getting the majority of snaps the entire game. Yeah. So, but both being fresh, first game of the season, it should be good. I don't expect them to wear out by the third quarter. So, we'll see. We'll see. And yeah. both of them should be able to generate some pressure. I think they should. I mean, that's why we brought Ngakwe in is because of his ability to do that. And we saw last year that, you know, Odenabo, I mean, in a backup rotational role, he only had one less sack than Everson Griffin did. So, yeah, it played a, th- a third of the snaps, too. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now if he can do that, you know, with a lar- lot larger sample size remains to be seen. But, you know, what we saw last year was pretty good. So. Well, and looking at the injury reports that came out today, Minnesota's injury report had zero personnel on it. However, this is Wednesday as we record. We did find out that Neil Hunter was put on IR. But the rest of the team's healthy, which is a good thing. Now, that team from Wisconsin's injury report, however, was a little bit longer. It had five individuals on it. It had three that were limited participation. Uh, Montrevious Adams, defensive lineman with a toe. Oren Burks, linebacker with a groin. And Raven Green, safety with a quadricep. Now, it had two other players on there. Randy Ramsey, linebacker with a groin who did not participate. And the big one that might help Effetti is Billy Turner, who is now their right tackle because their starting right tackle is out. He was a do not did not participate due to a knee issue. So hopefully Effetti has a good game rounding his corner. Yeah, even if Turner plays, he's probably not going to be at 100%. So... That does, I mean, we'll take any little advantage we can get right now with what's going on. So, I mean, I, I think we're going to, ma- the, the line's going to match up pretty well, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, the key I'm still worried about is what the, the, run, the run defense, but. We're going to find out. Hey, maybe that big, loud crowd noise will help. I heard today they play at 70 to 90 decibels, which I think is ridiculous because. U.S. Bank gets over 110 decibels. Easy. You know, at times. So, right. You know what's well, I, what's going to make a difference? Getting to Rogers, not the decibel level. Well, the decibel yeah. level for opposing teams, it's, it makes it hard to hear, especially for the linemen. And they've got to go off silent counts. And it frustrates the offense because the great fans in Minnesota are so loud. They're not going to have that issue this season, or at least the beginning of the season, until they get start getting in fans and in massive numbers to where they can make a difference. Thursday night, the first game of the season, we have, who is it? We have Kansas City and Texans. Texans. Texans in Kansas City. Now, Kansas City is playing with, they're having up to 25% occupancy of their stadium. And Kansas City, Arrowhead has always been loud. It's going to be interesting to see how loud 25% is. I doubt it's not even going to come close. No, I'm none sure of the not. None of the venues are going to be the same. None <clears> of them. Yeah. But, you know, what, one, th- one thing on that noise standpoint, you know, that I haven't heard a lot talked about, but I was listening to a radio show today and they were talking about it, you know, they're going to have to cut the quarterback and everybody's going to have to be a little more careful in the huddle because the defense is not that far away. So when they're talking, you know, calling plays and whatever, all else you got, you know, they're right there. They're going to be able to hear what's coming. If they, you know, if they have any indication whatsoever, what the play is, 
That's going to be interesting. So I, guess we'll... I never thought of yeah. that. Yeah. I would be tempted if I was one of the coaches. I don't know if you remember this. How old are you, Rhino? 45. Remember back in the early 70s, Kansas City used to do this. Remember, Dave, they used to line up their linemen and then their receivers with their back to the defense, and then mm-hmm. Lenny Dawson would stand in front of them and talk to them? Yep. Remember that line? Remember that? Mm-hmm. And I think they were the only ones. Maybe them and a couple other teams did it, but it was like a standing huddle. It wasn't the round huddle. Right. So their backs were to the defense and they because they thought that, you know, pe- People couldn't hear them that way. It'd be interesting to see if, if somebody goes to some kind of different setup. One of the NFL teams goes to a different huddle setup because I had never thought of that until Rhino. And I'm glad Ryan mentioned that. But you know why he mentioned it? Because he's a professional. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan prepares himself for this show. He doesn't he just go fly by night flying around Montana and shit. He gets his stuff ready. No, I am flying around Montana, but you know. <laughs> I am psyched this is the opener, guys. Drew is psyched. Because it's, we jump right into it, our rivalry, it's going to be the team from Wisconsin and the Vikings all the way down the wire. I think this is the two teams are going to fight out in the North, fight for the North title. The fact that uh, Zimmer didn't beat them last year and got kind of embarrassed at home, well, pushed it, around at home. It should be interesting on that. The fact that we're jumping right into this week one excites me. I want to get this thing going. Let's get this fight started. And I am concerned about their running game because they ran all over us last year. So our run defense, I don't know if it's any better. Uh, We'll find out. Shamar Stephens should be at nose, and we should have, uh, who is it, Jaleel Johnson? I think Jaleel Johnson is at at the three-tech right now, and then you got Armand Watts and Lynch and a couple other guys that are back. Look at the storylines. We've got Aaron Jones, who ran all over us. Uh, Zadarius Smith, who got like four sacks. Remember both Cousins, both Cousins, the Smiths. Cousins got sacked five times last game. Offensive line broke down. Jones ran all over us. Then we got Aaron Rodgers against our young DBs. We were mm-hmm. getting thrown to the fire week one. There's just a lot of really good storylines involved in this one. And then the fact that Zimmer hasn't beaten the floor yet. So it's, I, I love fact, it. I love it. And the fact that nobody's played it. A preseason game or anything, yeah, so nobody they, knows what what you're going to get until we step on the field on, at noon on Sunday. That's probably the biggest storyline of all of them, right mm-hmm. there. Right. So, yeah, I'm I'm really I'm excited that we're starting out with a game that of this magnitude, of this caliber. How sloppy! Oh, of football it's be very do you sloppy. It, it's it's going to be AAFXFL type sloppy, I think, for the first couple weeks until. Everybody gets kind of their legs back under them in actual game conditions and stuff again because it's, you know, with, with no live. I mean, they did a sc- couple of scrimmages. Well, you know, scrimmages are not at 100 percent. They're not, mm-hmm. you know, game condi- You know, you're not they tackling went, to the ground at full. Right. Mm-hmm. So, it. I mean, it, it could be messy, but it's still football. I think so. it's going to be more sloppy uh, scheme wise than it is fundamental wise. I don't think the fumbles and, and turnover and interceptions, I don't think that's going to be any more than it usually is. But the fact that it's game one and the schemes haven't really been, ever been so limited, this could be a shootout, man. Easy. Mm-hmm. Could be. Guys yeah. running around wide open, Irv Smith catching a pass, and there's nobody within 35 yards of him. Oh, that kind of stuff could easily happen. Oh, that would be sweet. Now, I'm interested in seeing how the referees play and deal with the new electronic whistles since they'll be wearing masks they can't do the normal keep the whistle in the mouth or keep it on their finger deal they'll be carrying electronic whistles i'm curious how that's going to sound because that's new to us we've watched football for 50 years and it's always been you know a normal whistle right more worried about their crappy calls than their whistles. Are they going to get the oh, right I'm call? I'm sure that's going to happen too. And that's another oh, advantage to having fans. <laughs> fans, when they talk about home field advantage, fan noise and reaction sways. They've documented it, studied it, sways officiating calls more than it does almost anything else. Hey, that oh, uh, that, that PI challenge is gone now, right? We're not dealing with that anymore. Ooh, right? I that challenge. I thought it got uh, eliminated. I I think you're right, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I thought or they, they were, they were, or at least there was a change to it. I don't remember exact uh, exactly what it was, but 
I think it's different than it was last year. So we don't end up with one of those offensive pass interferences on Dalvin Cook 10 minutes after the freaking play is over. Yeah, I thought it got eliminated last year. I might be wrong. I'm going to call call, 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 call Kay Adams when we're done here and figure it out. Okay. Tell her hi for me. Yeah. She's real mad at you. Oh, I'm sure she is. You stood her up for that dinner, so she doesn't want. (laughs) <laughs> a little chalky there water a little murky waters dave I'll, but i'll try to i'll try to soften the field i for appreciate you. it um <laughs> how are you guys watching the game sunday with my eyes probably sitting on the couch with your eyes your, <laughs> your mind it's gonna take your brain your mind your eyes and your brain have you I'm got just a, hanging you, out here i'm just yeah. hanging out here have you got enough remotes for this season Yes. Okay. The remotes have the remotes have. I only go through four or five now. Season. I'm cutting way down. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. You're mel- you're mellowing in as you get older, there, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this better be the year. We need our title this year. Um, just gonna. I'm all ready to go, like I usually am for that. No volume. Turn the volume down. I'm not going to be on on any game threads this year because I want to dial into the game more. I don't want to do any. I'm not going to be doing any threads this year. I'll probably be following about the fourth quarter, but um, I got a little bit different setup. I'm just going to – I'll be here in the house. And we're, I don't think anybody else is traveling around to a bar or anything, are they? No. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm going to sit I'm gonna sit in my recliner and watch it on my 65-inch big screen. So, mm-hmm. so. well, It's going to be a hell of a game. It's going to be a good, good start. You know, coming out of the gate, this is – you can't say game of the year for a week one contest, but it's pretty damn sure, pretty damn close. Well, and you know, for both of us, the the first couple three weeks is pretty big. I mean, uh, that the team from Wisconsin also has to go to New Orleans. I think is I don't know if it's week two or week three. So you know, we beat them Sunday, and they lose to New Orleans. They could be one and two after three games, and then you know, when we're sitting there at three and zero. Oh. I like the way you think. That's no easy <laughs> task going down there and winning. Uh-uh. No. no we'll we have didn't. it on Christmas Day. But with that, there isn't a whole lot to pregame because nobody's seen squat this summer and there was no well, preseason. Give me, give me your, you guys give me your keys to the game. Let's go three keys, each of you. <clears throat> let, me hear, let me see your, your main three. If you had to point to three things. I mean, my three things is the run defense. You know, I'm a little concerned about how we're going to hold up, you know, when we're running up, you know, when they start running up the middle on us with, you know, no longer having Lynn Vall and then Pierce out, you know. I mean, Stefan's a good run defender, so I'm hoping, you know, he can kind of plug it up there, but that remains to be seen. Um, Our offensive line against – their defense, you know, the, the two Smiths and all, you know, they're, they gave Cousins fits last year, and I, we haven't gotten any better on the offensive line as far as I'm concerned. Well, but, according to Mike Zimmer, Dakota Dozier's stronger this year, and Pat Elf lines back in his natural position. Dozier's a journeyman guard that's played 75 different places and never been a starter at any of them until he got here. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna temper my enthusiasm just a little bit on Dozier. Oh, the rhino just ran over the zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you gotta remember Brett Jones was a starter until he got here, and now he's on the uh, <clears throat> practice squad. Stop. Oh, Smith. Yeah, he's, he's, un- he's on the unsolved mysteries list. But then my third, the third one I've got is the thing that bugs me after we went to the final fifty three is we have two safeties. I was just going to bring that up. Oscar. And so, I mean, if anything happens to Harris or the Hitman, I mean, what are we going to do? Well, I mean, so you got, it's, it's you I, got. I know they, I know they said Chris Boyd can play safety, and there's a couple of the other guys that can play safety. But the point is, we're still thin. We're very thin. Right. We're, exactly. So you got, exactly. Rhino. Rhino has uh, run defense for the Vikings, Vikings offensive line, and the lack of any kind of depth at safety. Those are all three really good concerns. I am in agreement with all of those. The only one I'm going to add in are the young corners against the sneaky-ass Rodgers. 
because um, he has a tendency to screw with people's minds that are young in the in the secondary. Dave, go ahead, Dave. Well, shoot, first, shoot. I want to ever... correct something about the safety depth. We're not here to have you correct us. That because has it is the COVID us. season. I graduated a long time ago, Dave. I'm not taking a test here. So. <laughs> because it is the COVID season, the Vikings can dress and activate two people off the practice squad. So instead of 53 active, there's actually 55 active on Sunday. So who's the backup safety? Nate Metters. Oh, that makes me feel much better. Yeah, well, I'm sure. We're, we're good. Huh? But at least we're, we we're, we're good. No, no worries there then. Um, but I suspect I Nate Metters will be the backup. And that they he'll said be Harrison's dressed. hand can play safety too. So yeah. Well, yeah. except for they haven't put hand, they haven't tried him back there. The Metters has. He's in his second year with the Vikes. Uh, I'll. I'd I'd wager it'd be betters, but but I'm thinking Boyd because Boyd has played a little bit in the big nickel type thing. He brought bring him in there, so I mean I, I think he would probably be first guy in. Mm-hmm. Now the only person that the Vikings have announced protecting on the practice squad that can protect up to four people from being sniped from other teams is McLaughlin, the kicker. Well, and, I mean, and he's he's there in it, case of emergency. That's all he's right, It makes sense. It makes sense if Bailey gets COVID or whatever. That, that's all he's there you for. Know, that, that's what he's there for. Yeah. But um, the three things I worry about the most. For the game, not in your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I worry about Rodgers picking us apart. But I want to I wanna combine that with us getting enough pressure on him via rush packages and it may not just be Ngakwe and Adenabo. I want I'd like to see something from the three technique, but if we don't see it from there, I want to see some blitz creations via Barr or Harris or somebody that gets him off his mark. The whole deal about the LaFleur offense that Aaron Rodgers actually was fighting up until this year is that it's a rhythm offense. Well, Aaron Rodgers is great improvising and going outside of rhythm and extending plays. Well, if you bust up a rhythm offense, you generally win. I want to see that done. I want to see what's new in the blitz package realm, the pressure packages, to see how that goes. That's It'd be nice to see, Rod- 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 see Rodgers walk into a bar again. But- oh, that, that would be is, sweet. Uh- um, pressuring Rodgers, that's a huge point Dave brings up that neither of us actually brought up. That's probably that probably shoots right to the top of the list. If you don't <laughs> pressure him, you have no chance. Yeah, we're, we're not, yeah, we're screwed. If we can't get pressure on him, we're screwed. I do want to I see, think we I I think we can. I do want to see the Vikings run pass split and how the receivers are divvied up. Who gets X number of passes? Who is Kirk Cousins favoring. Now we expect Adam Thielen to be the big number one on that, but who else is he using? And if we see more of Irv Smith, especially in the twenties, do we see more BC? Do we see some Jefferson and how he does on his first professional game? And I also want to see on the run side of that run pass split, how Dalvin looks this year, Dalvin and Madison both. And I expect, I mean that's the offense. We're gonna that's what we're gonna see. Obviously the O line's key to that. Hopefully the run blocking is just as good or if not better. And hopefully the pass blocking, if Dozier got better and stronger, is better and stronger than it was last year. So we'll have to see on that end. And on the defensive side, I agree with Drew. I wanna see how these young corners perform. I wanna see if Zim does a rotation with them to where you get both Gladney and Dantzler in there at the same time or at different times, or if it's just Hughes, Hill, and one of them. And I want to see Hill, you know, return to his flashes of his rookie season. So those are my three biggies. Those are all very good points. I'm going to throw one out there to you guys that we haven't touched on yet, and it's more of a team attitude type thing. How about we start better in this game? Definitely. How about the Vikings that, come yeah. out and start that, with little intensity rather than standing around, three and out, trying to get – Or the defense letting the 
TTF Team drive, drive down, down, down on the field. Drive. Yeah. And then we, you know, <clears throat> you know, you know, they have that sluggish starts. They have so many mm-hmm. times. I think it's important that they come out, you know, come out with some intensity and throw the first punch. Can we see the Vikings start from the opening gun and, and just start kicking ass? That's it. Well, I, and that, and that's been a problem against the team from Wisconsin the last couple of years is we always start off just god awful. Three and, and out, three and out. Did we fall down like twenty one nothing up at their <clears throat> house last year? Yeah, and brought it back. Yeah. They should have won if somebody hadn't thrown an interception. Yeah. But we fell behind without the team wasn't even ready to play. You can't do that. You can't it, that, that's, you, a, you, that's a Mike <clears throat> Zimmer fault. You can't you gotta be a ready lot, to play for a lot open. of his games he starts yeah. out slow. You, but you, you can't go down twenty points to Rogers. I mean, because And you know, a lot of it is the whole we script fifteen plays on the offense and then on the defense we're evaluating the first fifteen first fifteen oh. to see what they're doing. Well, I want you evaluating that stuff during during the week in preparation and then making right. educated choices and then attacking that. Well, I'm gonna be looking for a fast start. Well, I want a fast start this week. And on, on that note, Dave, I mean one thing we haven't really talked about is this is the first time it probably in the entire Zimmer regime here that we basically have the same offense two years in a row, mm-hmm. you know, because Stefanski last year basically was running Kubiak's offense and now, you know, he's in Cleveland, but Kubiak steps in. So there's not going to be a whole lot of new stuff for the guys that were here last year to learn. It's kind of, you know, more of a continuation and hopefully that'll help us too. It should. Can they open it up a little more, though? The Vikings still feel really, to me, overly conservative on offense. I would like to see them open it up a little more. Well, on the scrimmage, it was reported, I want to say by Courtney Cronin again, but it may have been um, Matt Collar. How's Courtney? How's I, Courtney I, she's doing? doing good from what I gather. She was the, Tell her hi from me, will you? Okay, we will do. She was the pool reporter for most of the beat writers this preseason. I'd like to see the Vikings come out and attack a little more. I mean, I know they want to establish the run. I know Kubiak is always is out throughout his whole coaching career. He always wants to run it. But in that last um, scrimmage, they were throwing the ball more than the normal okay. than the run. Yeah. And it was, and they were remarking it may be Kubiak trying to open up the pass game even more. And we know he's a legendary offensive guy. He may even make the Hall of Fame um, with his Super Bowl win. So, right. Let's hope that's that's why I was saying I look forward to seeing the pass rush balance to see where it's at. Is it fifty fifty or is it sixty forty or you know I'm cool with fifty fifty. Uh, you know, if we open time up time. a big league lead and then we run all the fourth quarter just to run timeout, I'm cool with that. But at the normal part of the game, I want to see are we passing more than we're running. And are we running to set up the pass? I still want to fall into the pattern. Every first down, they run it that up the they middle. That they run it up the middle. And so they're yep. constantly in second and 12 all night. Can't, <clears throat> I want to see a little bit. I want to mix it up a little bit. Don't be don't be predictable on offense. But I think a fast start can really throw that team from Wisconsin. I mean, like Rhino said, we've never started. We don't start fast against them. And they do against us. So they're using that against us. Right. And they're and half the time, yeah, we're again. we're down fourteen nothing or seventeen three or whatever, you know, before before we can even take a uh, breath. It's ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. And I mentioned this last time we talked on the show a little bit. Zimmer's got to be pissed off because of they not they didn't come into our house and beat us on a last second field goal last year. They came in here and owned the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. They ran it at will. They pushed us around. They kicked our ass, mm-hmm. and there's no that other game, way. To... That game was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It was, and that and if you're not pissed off as a head coach, then you're the wrong coach, because that plus it wasn't to some AFC team. That's your division rival. That add that on top of it. Right. Zimmer team... should be like smoke coming out of his ears by Sunday, going, "I want to kick these guys' this ass." Now the only good thing, and I don't have the stat up, Zimmer is, uh, he's got a very high winning percentage on the opening week. He wins well, most of them, if not all of them. Better than having a losing percentage. Oh, yeah. Right. So, we'll find out. Okay. 
With that, like I, I said, I'm you. excited. I'm okay. gonna get right into it, man. Big divisional game. Why not? This is great. This is Absolutely. way better than easing in. You know, playing the Jags or something. I mean, I'm glad we're getting right to it, man. Okay, I got something for you guys. Bold prediction, each of you. Bold prediction? I got yep. a bold prediction. I got a nasty ass bitchin' bold prediction. First touchdown is going to be Eric Kendricks, pick six. And he becomes the only Viking defensive player to ever have two opening day pick six returns. Wow. Because remember, like three years ago, he got the Tennessee, he got that pick six. That was opening yeah. week. So opening week, he'll have a pick six, and he'll become the only player ever to do that. That's my spicy, bold prediction. Well, mine was, Dave. I thought of it earlier today or yesterday. I suspect these young crop of corners will surprise you, and I expect at least one, probably two, interceptions by them. That's not bold. Well, it is bold for us. How many interceptions did we get from our corners the last couple of years? Rhodes had Rhodes. won the last 12 years. <laughs> right. I think he has three in his career. Yeah. So. No. Two. Two is bold. You got to go two at least. Okay, two. Yeah. All right. That's bold. If our young corners came away with two swipes, Drewster would be slap <laughs> happy, happy, chappy, baby. All right. That's a good bold. Okay, Ryan, what's your bold? Uh, Dave kind of stepped on my touchdown call there, but I was, I was going to go – that uh, hold me closer, Tiny Dantzler picks it off at the end to seal the game. So that's, I like that. That's bold. Uh huh. And you you named a corner. I didn't name him. Right. I think I think Dantzler's going to surprise us this year. I really do. Well, cool. I'd love to have Dantzler seal the game. I remember uh, what's that guy that played corner for us last year that couldn't get his hips flipped around? Trey, Trey Wayne's. Wayne's. Wayne's had a pretty big pick six a couple seasons ago to yeah, end the did. game. Again. Yep. He was Rogers a great tackle. That, so, so uh, no, I like all those. If all those bold predictions came true, I'd be happy. Okay. Any last words, Rhino? It's <coughs> hate week. Uh, we got our rival coming in. We need to start fast. We need to knock them down right away. Don't do this like we were talking earlier don't do this fall behind by two scores crap go out there put 20 points on the board the first quarter shell shock them and then just cruise drew that man just said it perfectly all i can add to that is meow meow viking cow <laughs> yeah hey everybody that was well said this is our first pregame show with nothing to prep for it because we have no preseason, no nothing. Hope you've liked it. Join us approximately 15 minutes after the game when we go GMG Live in the Raw. And joining us for that show will be the great Flip Mozzie. So, looking forward to it. Looking forward to that Viking win. And everybody, oh! Thank you for watching or listening. As always, if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you're listening to the podcast, please rate us on your favorite aggregator. Skull, everybody! Skull, everybody!